My goodness, I just looked at my watch and it's Obi-Wan Kenobi time. It really sneaks up on you, you know? But also, it's about time, I reckon. Of all the things new Star Wars since the Disney acquisition in 2012, if I'm being honest, at this point, this is the only thing that I want to see. I don't even dislike new Star Wars. I like a lot of it. Star Wars has always been a mixed bag. But an Obi-Wan Kenobi something starring Ewan McGregor, I will watch and then twin sons meditate myself until my retinas burn out of my skull and I die. Listen, forget all of that, because right now we're going to be talking about the new trailer for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. We're going to be looking at the creative team behind it, the timeline in which it takes place, plus the locations, some of that concept art that was released, the Inquisitors, who we can expect to show up in the series, plus a couple of long shots for some other cameos, what you might want to watch or read leading up to this, and of course... Darth Vader himself. These are all the topics that are going to be covered. Time codes are in the description. Please leave a like on this video, or at the very least, nod solemnly at the screen you're watching this on. No, actually leave a like, because that's not good enough, quite frankly. Okay, so this project, which you may or may not have known, started as a standalone spin-off movie. You remember when Lucasfilm were doing those a Star Wars story spin-offs? We got Rogue One, and then we got Solo, and Solo didn't do very well, and so I kind of crushed that idea. So as a result of that, this was kind of reworked into what we're getting now, a six episode series. Deborah Chow is going to be directing every single episode, which is great because among other things, she's worked on Jessica Jones, Better Call Saul, and of course, The Mandalorian, meaning she's got a lot of experience working at Lucasfilm. And of course, the volume, which is where so much of Star Wars is now filmed. So you don't have to travel to locations around the world. And it's written by Joby Harold, who's worked on Edge of Tomorrow, John Wick 3, Army of the Dead. It's just a solid creative team. I like what they've got going on here. Now, in terms of the timeline, this is set... Nine years BBY before Battle of Yavin. Basically, nine years before Star Wars number one, the first one, A New Hope, and ten years after Revenge of the Sith. I had to poke around on a couple of Star Wars wikis to see what happened in nine BBY in the Star Wars universe. And I tell you this, not much. The Death Star was moved to Scarif. Miara last day was promoted to the rank of captain. And for LOM and Zarkus, they attempted to capture Han Solo and Chewbacca before crashing onto a planet full of scorpion droids. So there's quite a lot of room we can fill out here in the year 9 BBY. And by the looks of things, everything is not good for one peeping Ben Kenobi, who's been spending his days wandering in and out of town, sleeping in a cave, and having a good look at a young Luke Skywalker who's doing a now classic this is pod racing situation. Except no, this is not pod racing. You're trying to drive a house, Luke Skywalker. I do wonder though, what a young Luke Skywalker is thinking in this moment. He's probably imagining killing a million people all at once in an explosion of unfathomable power. But apparently though, at the start of the series, we will find Obi-Wan broken, faithless and beaten, somewhat given up. And according to information and imagery provided by EW, this cave is where he'll set up shop, but we still don't know whether he's actually living here or just hanging out. But you know, he does look pretty settled. Then again, maybe he's just keeping a particularly close watch due to a recent Tatooine related force event, which we will come back to. So I gotta say, for a man who's about to turn into old B1 Kenobi, Alec Guinness, thank you. Just thought of that joke, top of my head. He looks great. I always found it funny that in Star Wars 1, original Star Wars, Tarkin was like, surely that guy'd be dead by now. And it's like, why? He's like 57 years old in Star Wars original Star Wars number one. You're older than he is. I mean, you look older and you are older. I don't know, maybe he just went, hey, look, we haven't heard from that guy in a while. Maybe he twisted his ankle and fell down a storm drain or something. But as far as locations go, it looks as if we're going to be starting off on Tatooine. And then this whole thing is going to be moved off world after some inquisitors come to visit, which is good, I feel. It seems like we're always having a look at Tatooine. And I know it's probably some kind of fourth nexus point in the universe or something but I'm sick of it we're seeing it in the Mandalorian we're seeing it in that Boba Fett TV series it turned up at the end of Rise of Skywalker for some reason I've had enough quite frankly but I want to go through some of that concept art to see if we can figure out some locations here all right let's go now we've got Obi-Wan here riding an Eopi uh, this one's called Rue. This was seen at the very end of Revenge of the Sith, but of course doesn't show up in original Star Wars Star Wars number one so probably killed maybe hopefully Fingers crossed. Hashtag death for Rue. There's also a moment here that looks as if Vader is in his castle on Mustafa, that hologram in front of him. I'd imagine this is not Palpatine because normally the Palpatine hologram is like much bigger, much more imposing and he'd be kneeling. So it's probably an Inquisitor or some other kind of Imperial. Maybe he's looking at some security hollow footage and he's like, holy crap, is that Obi-Wan Kenobi? I hate that guy. I'm going to go get him. We also get some snow speeders here in what looks to be a rebel base. Could it be Hoth? Maybe. 
It's probably a bit early for Hoth. Could be Crate from uh, The Last Jedi. We also get a look at a new location, which we'll come back to. And what I first thought was the Jedi Temple, which the Emperor took and changed into a big old palace where he can live, which is a bit rude, sure. But at the same time, that's a pretty rad decision to make. I'm into it. But getting back to this image, if you tie it in with the footage in the trailer, this looks like the Fortress Inquisitus. Inquisitorius. It's the final location in Jedi Fallen Order. Very cool location. It looks as if they even have a special Darth Vader shaped Darth Vader castle for his chair. He doesn't really do a lot of boardroom sitting though, does he? So I feel like that mostly goes unused. Now the Jedi Hunters, the Inquisitors, they are going to be playing a significant role in this series. Now, there will be some new ones, yes, but we also have a rough idea of who can and cannot appear as an Inquisitor. Because these blokes, they've been showing up for a number of years now, just flying and dying all over the place. So, for example, the second sister who died 14 BBY, she cannot make an appearance because she was cut in half by Darth Vader in the game Star Wars Fallen Order. Another example of someone who cannot appear, the 10th brother with his funny little ponytail. He died 18 BBY can also not make an appearance. But then you got the likes of the Grand Inquisitor, who died five years BB... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop using BBY. It's really... I don't like it. Five years before Star Wars for Star Wars, original Star Wars. And they've also got the fifth brother and seventh sister. Three years before Star Wars, original Star Wars. And then the ninth sister, who seemed to die in Fallen Order in 14 years before original Star Wars. Star Wars 1, big numero uno. That to me felt like an unconfirmed death. There's a bunch of other Inquisitors kind of floating around that could make an appearance. But it seems like whenever they introduce a new show or video game or something like that, they might hint at an Inquisitor prior in like one comic panel. But for all intents and purposes, they're largely introduced as a new character. Now, even though I said the fifth brother is dead, he has returned because that hasn't happened to him yet. He has no idea that he's going to turn into a cartoon and Darth Maul is then going to stab him. Sun Kang, who's from various Fast and Fury movies, is playing in this time around. And like with the Grand Inquisitor, that is a hell of a makeup endurance to end up like this. God, that seems awful to have on your face. In the trailer, we also see a new unnamed female Inquisitor, but the one whom looks to be the most prominent is Reva, as played by Moses Ingram. Director Deborah Chow and writer Joby Harold describe the character as ruthlessly ambitious and that they share a dark side goal. That's in reference to Reva, the Grand Inquisitor, and Darth Vader. For now, though, I reckon. That's what I reckon. I think she'll have a change of heart at some point. That's how these things often go in Star Wars. You can kill a bunch of kids and then go, Ooh, sorry, I feel bad. I feel bad about that now. And then you get to go to Star Wars Jedi Heaven, whatever that even looks like. I bet it's real boring, though. I'd rather the infinite blackness. Thank you very much. The thing about the Inquisitorious is, though, that I believe, for the most part, if not all part, they're fallen Jedi, which is why we've seen a few of them kind of tilt back towards the light, because they all essentially grew up with the ideals of the Jedi just beaten into them. The Grand Inquisitor, for example, was a Jedi Temple Guard, a job that he was always resentful of, so when the Emperor came knocking, he was like, Hells yes, I will kill Jedi with you every day of the week. God damn it, thank you very much. And you know, fair enough. You spend your entire life meditating and levitating rocks and shit and learning to do flips and read minds and study multiple languages and how to fly different starships and fighting stances and methods. Only to be told that you have to stand guard over a bunch of people who essentially have the same abilities as you? That sucks! I think the Inquisitors, though, are drawn to Tatooine not because of Obi-Wan Kenobi, but another Force-sensitive person. Maybe someone who himself is looking for Obi-Wan Kenobi. We hear at one point Kenobi say, the fight is done, we lost. And I suspect that's him telling an old Padawan just to kick rocks. I'm not doing any Jedi stuff anymore. I'm going to grow up my hair and I'm going to sit in the sand. But he also probably does this because he can't reveal his real purpose for being on Tatooine. That whole Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker situation, that's very much on a need-to-know basis. Then that former Jedi or Padawan, whomever he is, is caught by the Inquisitors and killed, which prompts Obi-Wan Kenobi to do a big mission. Maybe continuing the mission of the dude who died? I don't know. We don't even see who this is. It could be Benny Safdie in a minor role. Who's to say? Probably Benny Safdie though, I reckon. But speaking of new characters, and by new characters, I mean old character, Darth Vader is returning. And not only is Darth Vader returning, Hayden Christensen will be reprising the role of. Now you wouldn't bring back Hayden Christensen 
unless they were going to be showing some Hayden Christensen, which means we're probably going to get some of him out of the suit. There's a number of ways they could do this. The flashback to like the Clone Wars. Maybe we're getting some Order 66 stuff. Just seeing him just hacking through kids, you know what I mean? Maybe we're going to see him in the back to tank. What I think is going to happen though, is he's going to be demasked at one point by Obi-Wan Kenobi and they like fight proper face to face. That sort of happened in an episode of Rebels, but I've always liked that imagery of like the Darth Vader suit, a bit busted up, helmet off, and you just see his white little egg head poking out of the top of it. Just as a reminder that, you know, there's a real ugly burnt up dude in there. Now, as far as other returning actors from the movies go, we're going to be getting Joel Edgerton as Owen Lars and Bonnie Peace as Aunt Beru. I know Joel Edgerton has expressed, hey, I'd love to do more stuff in Star Wars other than just show up and wipe my hands with a rag. And you know what? Terrific. They're great. Would love to see it. And seeing as he features fairly prominently in the teaser, I'd say we're getting a fair bit of him because also we get this kind of minor confrontation with him and Reva. Deborah Chow even said of him, thank you, George, for casting Joel Edgerton as Uncle Owen. That's all I can say. Maybe Owen Lars witnessing the death of a Jedi and then confronting Ben Kenobi is the thing that starts the rift between them and is also partially responsible for Kenobi heading off planet, perhaps to draw attention away from Luke. Maybe it's Leia related, whom is also rumoured to make an appearance. Whatever it is, he'll be visiting the new location of Dayu, which according to Joby Harold, has a sort of Hong Kong feel to it. It's got a graffiti ridden nightlife and it's kind of edgy. It's got a different lane and a different feeling. You also see Kenobi using a blaster on this planet, something he has been very much against. I believe his famous line was, I hate blasters, I hate everything about them. Sure, I just used one to shoot this robot alien man, whoever this is, I've forgotten his name, but I'm ungrateful for this thing that just saved my life. And I guess, you know, if you wanted to keep a low profile anywhere in the galaxy, you would go with a blaster rather than a lightsaber because everybody in Star Wars has a gun, it seems. We also see at one point a Western style confrontation in an alley with Reva. Now I think Obi-Wan Kenobi on his worst day would absolutely wipe the floor with Reva. With a lightsaber that is, I'd imagine. But without a lightsaber, I don't know, maybe not. Plus he's out of practice and he's real sad and he's virgin on 50. Here's some cameos though. Here's some cameos that I'm thinking, yeah, this is a bit of a shot in the dark, but what if this happens? What if these people show up? First up, Ahsoka. She's alive in this time period. Why not? Then maybe the likes of Bail Organa or Mon Mothma, also banging around the universe. We talked about Fallen Order before. There's a bunch of people in that who could potentially show up. I'd love to see a Cal Kestis. I don't really think this is going to be a Cal Kestis story, but it'd be a pleasant surprise. Uh, Qui-Gon Jinn as a Force ghost. Now, Liam Neeson went on uh, the Jiminy Kimmel show and he said he hadn't been approached for this series, but I don't believe it, quite frankly. I'm not saying he's definitely in it, but what I am saying is there is no way they didn't at least float this idea to Liam Neeson. How about this one though? Now Samuel L. Jackson, he's been banging on about this for years, the return of Mace Windu. He's constantly like, no, oh, Jedi can fall from a great height or whatever. Of course I could have survived that particular situation. And yeah, I completely agree. Why not bring him back? Maybe he's living in the underworld. You know what I mean? Just wandering around the streets with one hand, looking for his lightsaber. He's like, I'll tell you what, when I bloody find my lightsaber, I'm going to bloody climb this tower, get back up there. I'm going to kill Anakin Skywalker so much. I feel like we never kind of got the full potential of Samuel L. Jackson in the Star Wars universe. Just someone unhinged and angry. And, you know, being thrown out of a window after having your hand chopped off, I think that might very well push a person over the edge. Here's some things that you might want to read or watch in the lead up to this series. Not essential by any stretch, but, you know, if you want to get an idea of the time period and the characters' mindsets in this era, maybe give these a look, you know what I mean? There's the Twin Suns episode in the third season of Star Wars Rebels. This is set just a little bit before original Star Wars, Star Wars 1, but it is Obi-Wan in the desert and he takes on Darth Maul. It's a great episode, well worth a look. Then of course you've got Twilight of the Apprentice, also from Star Wars Rebels, where Ahsoka takes on Darth Vader. We mentioned that in brief before. And in terms of comics, you've got the Journal of Obi-Wan from the first run of the mainline Star Wars series. They've been compiled into one book, but it just covers this like burnt out and lonely and bored Obi-Wan Kenobi hanging out on Tatooine, just being like, I want to do literally anything else but this. And this is a good one also. I'm a big fan of the Darth Vader comics in general, but if you had to read one, Darth Vader from 2017 is really terrific. So it starts the second he's off that operating table from Revenge of the Sith. And it goes through a bunch of early days Darth Vader stuff. Like how he gets his new lightsaber crystal. The hunting of Jedi. It delves into his relationship with the Inquisitors. That big castle that he lives in. It's very good. There's also some non-canonical stuff. You know, you might want to take a peek at. There's a Star Wars Kenobi book. There's a terrific, very 
very short comic from Star Wars Visionaries called Old Wounds, where old Obi-Wan Kenobi again takes on Darth Maul, but in a very different way than what we saw in Rebels. There's a book, Dark Lord, The Rise of Darth Vader, which is again early days Darth Vader in the suit, just hating himself. And look, if I had to recommend one more thing, maybe just check out the Star Wars movies. At the very least, Revenge of the Sith, and then Star Wars 1, A New Hope, first Star Wars. Why do I keep doing this joke? Is it even a joke? Not really. Sometimes I just attach myself to a dumb thing and I keep saying it. But in terms of Star Wars content, the live action spin-off stuff at least, this is the only thing I've ever really wanted to see. Sure, The Mandalorian is great and all the other things. It's a bonus, you know what I mean? But an Obi-Wan series set in this time period with you and McGregor? Come on! After this, I'll retire from Star Wars. I can happily not talk about it ever again. This is all I wanted. I'm glad they're doing it as a series and not a movie also. Question for you though, do you think this will be a one and done? I'm kind of hoping that it is. You know, if he's going to be having a showdown with Darth Vader, how, how do you top that? Do the next season, do you go, well, let's just, I don't know, we'll do that again, I guess. I just don't really feel like you can. These six episodes are probably going to act as like the swan song for this particular character. At least I hope it's that way anyways. Should we do weekly recaps on these though, like we've been doing for the Marvel episodes? We usually don't cover Star Wars shows weekly. But maybe, you know, because of the whole retirement thing, we could make an exception. I don't know, we'll see. Let us know. Oh, and speaking of videos on this channel, this Sunday I'm releasing something that's been in the works for a while. It's basically this enormous retrospective on the 1997 re-release of Star Wars, the original trilogy. Like how it all came together, the decisions behind all of the changes, you know, the good and the bad of what the end product was. I think it's really fascinating. Maybe you do too. So subscribe and, and bell icon because that'll be the next thing going up here after this. All right. Anyways, we are going to be covering this trailer in more depth on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Comes out Monday. It actually comes out early on Sunday for those who are subscribed to our little private Patreon service over at bigsandwich.co, where there's a bunch of stuff there. It's all ad free, including bonus podcasts and early videos and movie commentaries. We have covered literally every Star Wars movie. We've done a movie commentary for each. That's linked below if you do want to check it out. Subscribe for more stuff. And I'll see you all at another video, hopefully. Or not. Maybe this is a one and done for you. That's okay. This is a very big platform. There are much better videos out there. And you should find them. I think that's important. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>